on your voice. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to the church this evening in an end of me. Put us an open receiving heart to not just be hearers but also be doers of the word. In Jesus' name, Amen. All of thank our pastor and the and the committee for giving me an opportunity to share the word of God this evening. It brings me great joy to share the word of God. Always the word of God is such a wonderful pressure as we talk about and as we go into this, it will definitely be a wonderful journey for every one of us. And I'm pretty sure that as we meditate on the word of God, God speaks to us. We will be able to hear the sweet voice of God. And I'm sure that this evening God is going to speak to each one of us. Let's turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 10 verse 37. Luke chapter 10 verse 37, the latter part of the verse that says, Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. What do you mean by likewise? He's asking you to do the same. So what happened before that? And this is an incident that is very, very familiar to each one of us. Right from our Sunday school, we've been listening to this story. The story goes like this. It starts in verse 26. Um, 25, sorry. A lawyer who was a guy who was very, very smart, a very smart person, who is very, very good in terms of the law, comes to Jesus and he asks him, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit life? He has studied all the books, the books of Moses. He has been, it's by heart for him. And he comes to Jesus with a question, What do I do to inherit life? And here we see Jesus answering, you know, like how he answers everybody else. When you look at the way that Jesus answers, he always answers with a question. He's, Jesus is asking, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And for which the lawyer says, uh, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, uh, your neighbor as yourself. Which means, Jesus also knew that the lawyer, or the one who was very good in the law, already knew the law very clearly. He knows the answer to the question that he's asking. And this person just said that you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and also love your neighbor likewise. For which, the next verse, verse 28, says, you have answered correctly, Jesus says, and you will live. Go do this and you will live. And this is where the lawyer is even more trying to find, to prove himself, to prove his point, to kind of justify himself. And he's asking another question saying, All right, Jesus, you have been asking me to love the Lord and also love my neighbor, but who is my neighbor? And who is my neighbor? That is when, you know, Jesus narrates a very famous parable, the parable of Good Samaritan. And this parable, I'm not getting into the details, but this parable finishes with a question. Verse 36. Verse 36. Jesus narrates this entire parable and finishes with a question. You know that the priest came in, and uh, he just went away, the Levite also came, saw the wounded man went away, but the Samaritan who came in took mercy or showed mercy on the person who was wounded and he took him on his donkey to an inn and uh, so that, that's the story and Jesus asks, so all of these, do you, what do you think? Do you think, uh, among, who, among all of these, whom do you think is the neighbor? For which the man, the lawyer, answers the one who showed mercy. The 
one who showed mercy. The lawyer was so much inclining to the traditions of the Jewish custom, where he was even thinking that Samaritans were always an outcast. So we didn't even want to mention the name Samaritan to Jesus. You know, he says that, you know, the one who showed mercy. And Jesus says, like, you know, Jesus says to him, go and do likewise. Today we are meditating on the ministry of the lady. And all of us form the lady here. The lady is nothing but each one of us sitting in this church, except for the pastors, the ordained minister of God, the called as clergy. But the rest of us, all of us, you know, we are called as the lady. Lady is never mentioned in the Bible, but in, in, in the early Christian church, this morning pastor also mentioned that even during the time of Jesus, it was only the lady that did the ministry among the people. In the early church, all believers were leaders and servants. But as the church grew, people wanted representatives of God, and among themselves, they chose a few to be priests, few to be pastors, to lead them. Eventually, the one clergy, you know, became the ones on the pulpit at the altar, and the rest of them became the lady, or we call them lay people. That also leads us to understand what is the role in that case of a pastor or a clergy and the role of a lady. According to the Bible, the role of the pastor is very, very clear, as found in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. The first, the first duty or the first role of the pastor is to preach the gospel. Mark chapter 16, verse 15, very clearly talks about that. The second one is found on Acts chapter 20, verse 28, is to protect the flock. The first one, to preach the gospel, and uh, it says, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. And the second one found in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, which says, protect the flock. And the third one, which clearly talks about equipping the saints for ministry. Equipping the saints for ministry. The first one, to preach the gospel. Second one, to protect the flock. Third one, equipping the saints for ministry. These are the primary duty of pastor or a clergy. Of course, now the question comes, so what does it mean? What is the role of the lady? In addition to what I have just mentioned, everything else. Everything else. Our role is to kind of do the ministry in Again, 
You know, he goes to church and said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? He justifies himself. He wants to somehow find fault with Jesus. This lawyer's intention was very well known to Jesus as well. From this story, you know, we understand that the lawyer knows, you know, knew the Moses, the Muslim law, you know, the law of Moses by heart. In fact, like when you look at these, uh, the commandment that he said, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, with all your strength, that is another, that is a separate verse found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And that is the that is the first commandment he talks about. The second one, love your neighbor, is found in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, which says, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I have the Lord. The lawyer had so much wisdom to connect these two together and narrate this to Jesus Christ. But he still wanted to test Jesus. His intention was to somehow hinder the ministry of Jesus. He was trying to find fault and accuse Jesus. Today, as a church, we need to introspect how many of us can identify ourselves like this lawyer. Maybe we have not been really, you know, accusing Jesus, but are we also, you know, in terms of really being a hindrance for the ministry? Are we being a, a bottleneck for the ministry? We need to really introspect and see ourselves. The ministry of laity is not this. It's not to kind of fight for. It's not to kind of really be a stumbling block. The Bible very clearly says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 5, Hypocrites! First remove the pile from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. We can never be a hindrance to the ministry. We can never be in a complaining nature. We can never actually put on a face, just a, a wonderful face inside the church and be dirty among outside the church. Let our words and action not hinder the ministry of God. That's how the boy did. The second character that we see here in this story is the Good Samaritan. The title goes Good Samaritan. What did the Samaritan do? As you know, the priests and the Levi saw the wounded man and they passed away. They were thinking that, like, you know, it is ceremoniously unclean. But the Samaritan, though he was going on a longer trip, though he had a very clear purpose, he still stopped. He came out of his comfort zone and he made adjustments to help this wounded man. Are we able to come out of our comfort zone to be part of the ministry of God as lay, lay people, as lay leaders, as, as the laity? We are called to move out of our comfort zone. We are called to make adjustments in our regular life. And I think it is very important that we need to step out of our comfort zone and make major adjustments. The Samaritan had to get out of his vehicle, which means he had to get down from his donkey, number one. Second, he had to take a detour to make sure that the wounded man is admitted or probably, you know, uh, taken to an inn where there were more facilities, where there was food available. Probably like he had a different route to go. You know, his end, uh, you know, journey was somewhere a different route. Probably he had to take a different route. He had to detour to ensure that this person is much safe. That is what a lady is expected to do. The ministry of lady is expected to move out of the comfort zone, to move out, to make adjustments. The third one is like, you know, probably he even ensure to kind of give some of his earnings to provide and to care for the wounded man at the end the end, at the, at the end to the innkeeper. So he actually had to kind of make so much of sacrifices. So much of sacrifices this Samaritan did. And today we are taking this as an example of the ministry of lady. A lot of men in the Bible that we see, Noah, Abraham, you know, Paul, the disciples, had to make major adjustments 
in their journey and we see that in the word of God. A lot of missionaries, you know, we, we see that, but you are not your own missionaries. Today we are seeing them here because there was a missionary who came a long time ago and he established a church here so that we can sit down and listen to the word of God. They sacrificed so much to come here all the way from their country with less transportation. The Bible that we see here is being with us with so much of sacrifices that missionaries did. Zegan Paul, if you have been to Paragambani, you would see the kind of sacrifices that they did. The ship would not reach on time. The missions would not reach on time. There are so much of sacrifices that people had to give up. Give up families. Give up their own lives sometimes. And therefore, that is the ministry of laity. And today, we need to ensure that we are going out of our comfort zone. Otherwise, Jesus calls us as whitewashed tombs. We may be doing really good outside, but deep inside, it's only Jesus and you who know who you are. And I think we need to kind of see today, even the prayer that we had in our uh, the topic for the day, very clearly exemplifies what is the ministry of late. How are we supposed to, uh, how are we supposed to kind of support, help, reach out to the people who are in need? Ceremoniously clean was a higher priority for the priests and the Levites. That's not the ministry of God. Today I think, what are the changes that we, God wants you to make in your life? What are the sacrifices that God is telling us today to make so that we can be a blessing in the kingdom of God? To sum up, to close, the Lord was an influence to the ministry. Let us not be fault finders and turn people away from God. But the Samaritan, the one who made adjustments to pursue the ministry, let us be willing to make such changes to pursue God's ministry. Let us ask God to change us from being fault finders to what, you know, God, God kind of tells us that we need to sacrifice and let's be ready to sacrifice that. Let's probably ask God to change our heart. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to us, to, to us today. You spoke to us about the role of each of us in your ministry today. Help us not to be fault finders like the lawyer. Let us be positive in our outlook towards your ministry, God. Like the Samaritan, enable us to make adjustments, to move out of our comfort zone, and to pursue your ministry. Thank you for enabling us to make these decisions in our hearts. Strengthen us to put these decisions in action in our lives. From this day forward, Lord, we pray that you would continue to speak to us. In your name we pray. Amen.